When I first saw Super Buckyball Tournament, it immediately reminded me of Speedball 2. Now, if you're not old enough to remember Speedball 2, it was a classic, futuristic cyberpunk sports game that was developed by Bitmap Brothers. And it was originally released on the Atari ST all the way back in 1990, and there was a, another version prior to that. I personally played it on my Amiga 1200 with my uh, side stick joystick. It's a brutal, fast-paced handball and ice hockey amalgamation where scoring goals earn you the same number of points as knocking out one of your opponents. A 1080p HD version is available on Steam right now. If you're interested in that review, then click on here. So when I first saw Super Buckyball Tournament, I immediately felt excited at the prospect of having super modern graphics with advanced controls and perhaps even a modern twist on the Speedball 2 gameplay style. I also noticed presentation and environmental similarities to that of Rocket League, another super fast paced sports title which is immensely fun to play, even if you're absolutely terrible at controlling the car like I am. Whilst I am eternally grateful to Pathia for sending me a key to review, I have unfortunately come to the conclusion that Super Buckyball Tournament is nothing at all like what I was expecting and hoping for. And as a result, my feelings towards the game are a mixture of disappointment and frustration. Now, I've given this game some serious time, playing three full seasons, and I've learnt much about the game during that time. But whilst there are definitely things that I do like about Super Buckyball Tournament, there are many, many more things I simply find undesirable and ultimately frustrating. Now, I've done some additional research prior to writing this review, and the vast majority, in fact, 100% of all the YouTube videos I've watched have been very positive about this game, endlessly promoting the Super Buckyball Tournament as a must-buy game. This isn't going to be one of those videos. Instead, I'm going to be honest about the issues that I found whilst I was playing the game, and I will offer some suggestions that I think will make the game better. If you just want to hear my thoughts on that, then check out the link in the video now, or click on the link in, at the end of this video. Super Buckyball Tournament, then, is a 3 versus 3 ball game played on a small court surrounded by holographic barriers with a goal at each end. You'll have two attackers and one defender, but in multiplayer there are no restrictions to position or playstyle. You can literally play any way you like. You don't have to have somebody in goal the whole time. You can move about as freely as you want. Pathia have given me access to the beta demo version, which I am reviewing today. And right now it appears that there are just eight unique players available. They each have their own special unlockable skill sets and abilities, so there's a lot of player repetition in this game. You will see the same character face represented multiple times over. Now sadly, I don't actually know for sure how many players are expected in the long term, but I rather suspect that with the transfer situation as it is, even at full release we're going to see a lot of repetition in the game. Now, as mentioned, there is a multiplayer available, which does allow you to select the very best and most maxed out characters to play as. But I decided to focus my time on the career, which is set across a single league with three divisions, and it starts you in the lowest tier with just one quality player to your name and a small amount of cash. In order to get promoted, the two top teams after five rounds will have a playoff, and that will happen each season and the winners will obviously get promoted. At the end, or at the start of each season, you will have the option to transfer in any new players, renegotiate and renew any existing or close to expiring contracts, and distribute potential points. Now, potential points are what enable you to improve a player's skills, their speed, their accuracy, their strength, their stamina, and their ball control. In addition to the skills and the unlockable special abilities, you can purchase performance enhancing upgrades for your players, and you can equip up to three of these per player. That then further enhances their abilities. As players play, they will also earn XP, and at the end of each match, these points are tallied up and their overall rank will increase. As players rank up, they will unlock special moves or abilities, and these are indicated below. 
and only unlock once the necessary rank is achieved. You will earn small amounts of money for each match, whether you win, lose or draw. And this money has to pay player wages as well as buying upgrades and transferring in new talent. Players get tired as they play and tired players are significantly less capable, especially if left under AI control. During the game you can of course switch between players, but you will find that the vast majority of the early players that are uh, made available to you, whether they're AI controlled or not, are pretty poor at everything, especially goal scoring. In fact, almost all AI players are pretty terrible at shooting in the early stages and ranking them up is just as essential to progress as is resting players before big games. Go for it dude. Go on Alfonso. Wow, he is such a terrible shot. So, as mentioned, whilst I am eternally grateful to Pathia for sending me a key to review, sadly I have come to the conclusion that Super Buckyball Tournament just isn't for me, at least in its existing state. It is fair to say that I was looking for a game that has the intensity of Speedball 2 and the fun factor of Rocket League, and right now Super Buckyball Tournament fails to deliver on either of those two things. So these are my complaints and suggestions to achieve that. In my humble opinion, the ball is just too big. It looks ridiculous and it makes it way too easy for the keeper to save the ball. Now this works in Rocket League because of the way the game is put together. But I think this game would work so much better if the ball was a lot smaller. Capable of being held in a single hand, for example, like in Speedball 2. In addition to that, there are no physics on the ball whatsoever. And for the love of God, get rid of that auto passing facility item. You don't have to aim a pass at anybody. You can just chuck it to them no matter where you are, even if you're not looking at them. And for goodness sakes, sort the camera out. The camera is so slow. I'm using a controller. Maybe it's faster on a keyboard and mouse, but on a controller, the, the speed at which the camera turns around is just way too slow, way too slow. Overall, the game feels clunky. It lacks any kind of necessary skill and it just literally irritates me endlessly. I probably hate the passing mechanic more than anything else, but there are things that can be done to make this game better, I feel. First of all, I think we need more players on the pitch. Perhaps we only need just one more player per team. That would be enough. Passing between just two outfield players and one keeper is mind-numbingly boring, but we would have to get rid of that mechanic we would have to get rid of the facility to pass without looking. The ability for the ball to just disappear and move on any trajectory it feels like. I also think we should add injuries to the game. Now this might be something that they're planning on adding later on, I don't know, but right now it doesn't exist. I think players should be able to attack each other and not just the ball. I am so sick and tired of being tackled by players who are not even close enough to me to touch the ball. They use like a special tackle ability in order to block or steal the ball or even block my player from moving. So if I jump up to take a shot, they can like freeze me in midair and take the ball off me. Just like the passing being automated, that just feels like cheating to me. And I can't stand it. It irritates me endlessly. I want to be able to power slide into a player, knock them flat on their ass, maybe even injure them and have to have a sub come on. Another thing which doesn't currently appear to be available. Then it would be nice to have to manage the injuries in the career as well. Now these kind of things are definitely in Speedball 2 and Rocket League. Well, it has something similar to that where you can smash into a car and they explode and you get some like XP points for that. And yes, sometimes players can be knocked to the ground in this, but it's only when you're using special abilities and literally it's not enough to really work it out. Another way that I think this could work is if you give us more ways to score points. I like the fact that the long range shots can get you two points, whereas a short range shot will get you one point. But even using my special ability, more often than not, the AI keepers save my shots now which is ridiculous because the shooting mechanic in this game is so bad, it's almost literally the only way that I can score. Why not give us extra points for knocking players unconscious or have special point scoring area side combos 
like the stars mechanism in Speedball 2 or the little glass domes that you can bounce the ball off and get two points for each time you do it. I think this would really open the game up a bit more. If your opponents outskill you and you just can't keep up with them, then you might still be able to beat them by literally beating them. And that would really, I think, offer a whole new dimension to the game and really open things up. More should be done with the pitch itself. The holographic side panels look great, just like they do in Rocket League, but they have absolutely no impact on the game other than keeping the ball in play. Let's have the players with the ability to run up the sides, like in Titanfall 2, a bit of a, a wall run, something like that. Or add a channel that allows the ball to be played from one side to the other, like they do in Speedball 2. Perhaps collisions could be included here. The ability to slam into a player and slam them into the wall and leave them laying on the deck. That, I think, would really open the game up as well. Finally, something has to be done about the controls. Now, I've already touched on this a few times the shooting for me is especially poor and probably why auto passing was added in my humble opinion because aiming is not something that works very well at all the camera which oh, i've already mentioned is too slow appears to be the only way that you can aim your shot so if you have to press and hold the x button whilst aiming it's not going to work, not unless you've got an extra thumb on your right hand. Now, if you aim first, which is what I've started trying to do, so you aim your shot, then take the shot. But whilst you're taking the shot, if the keeper moves into the spot that you've shot at, you're done for. You can't then change your mind at the last second and then try and just slice it into the bottom left hand corner. It doesn't happen. And especially with the ball being so big, I mean, saving the ball is just ridiculously easy, unless you're using a power mode, in which case it's completely impossible. I managed to block one power shot, which knocked me back into the goal, which I actually thought was very cool, but then the uh, the other AI player just picked it up and scored a goal. My goalkeeper didn't even try and stop him at all. Maybe we need to have some sort of power bar for, a sh for the shot mechanism with a high or low modifier, perhaps, and allow us to put in curved passes and shots. Now, I've mentioned already, right now there are no physics on the ball. So you can throw the ball directly ahead of you and it will just go up in the air and come back behind you and go to your teammate. I hate all that. It's horrible to play with. It feels like I'm not actually playing the game. It feels like... Oh, it's just awful. I just re it really rubs me up the wrong way. It's not something I like at all. Power play shots are the only good way to score, really. There are exceptions. There are occasions where I've, on one occasion, I picked the ball up straight off the, um, off the restart, jumped in the air, took a shot and scored. But honestly, that happens very, very rarely. And overall, the game is just too slow, too clunky, and just frustrating. Losing the ball when there's nobody around you or getting put into a status field where you can't move just as you're taking a shot. All of that is just too frustrating. And when you're playing in the career and you've got players with no abilities whatsoever, it's like, it's, it's a horrible experience. It really isn't that fun at all. Now, finally, the, the thing that really, another thing that really needs to be looked at is the UI. It looks fine, but the menu functionality is a total mess. I mean, it is in beta. There's probably loads of issues here, and that's why I hate it so much, but it is absolutely terrible. In addition to it being absolutely terrible, there are things completely missing. Um, for example, we need way more tabs and filters on numerous pages in order to make the entire team management system more functional and more enjoyable. I should just be able to pick a player Go up to the player I want to swap him with and swap him. And if one of those players is on the pitch, then he goes on the pitch. Simple as that. Right now, the way that you're doing it is just adding too many clicks to a very simple system. Starting a match sometimes require me to navigate all the way through every single element on the page before I can get to the button that says play the game. So I've set my team up. Let's say I've got seven or eight players in my team. I've decided which three I'm going to play. I put them on the pitch and I'm all ready to go. Uh, but now I've got to navigate through the entire, either my entire team myself and then go across the bottom, or I've got to navigate through all three of my players, plus all three of their players, plus the second tab of all three of their players before I can get to the play button. 
it doesn't work like that. It's it's awful. It's terrible. And the information when you're buying a player about which player is a defender, which player is a midfielder, or they call them a balanced player, and which player is an attacker, it should be on the first page, not hidden away in the second page. And also when you're looking to buy players, especially at the beginning, you're, you're going to start off looking for free contracts. Now in the free contracts page, there is no way to filter. If I'm just looking for a defender, I want to be able to go, just show me all the players with the defender capability, and then I can pick who I'm going to hire, if anyone at all. There is a secondary filter tab page, but that has been extracted from that page and put into another page, which is just pointless. It needs to be in the right place. And there are so many areas where you just want to sort, you know, you're setting your team up. You just want to sort by who's fit and who isn't. I mean, this isn't sport. You can't pick a team to beat an opposition team in the same way that you can in a football match. So more needs to be done to, to simplify the setup mechanism for the teams. At the moment, it's, an, it's just another frustration. Obviously, these opinions are my own. These are my feelings based on the gameplay experience that I've had. And the recommendations are also my own ideas. And yes, I do know that this is in beta, but I feel that it's my responsibility to be honest about my experience with the game so that the developers can at least consider their final release decisions. Now, it looks like this is pretty much the game that's going to come out. And you might not agree with me on every single point that I've made or any point, and that's absolutely fine. Perhaps you've got better ideas than I do on how we can make the game better. And I would absolutely I would absolutely love to know what they are. So do feel free to comment below. I can tell you why I think all of these issues exist. And I've said this a million times before. It's bullshit YouTubers who would rather promote a poor game than make genuine good feedback and suggestions in order to encourage the change and make it a better game. They would rather um, just promote it to you so that they get more games sent to them. And I've had some sick and twisted people in the past suggesting to me that I should be more positive when I'm looking at games because, and I quote, you catch more flies with honey. Well, that's just disingenuous, isn't it? It's like a con artist, basically, who will just tell you whatever they think will convince you to give them more of your money. Or like when a TikTok star promotes a product that they never use but claim is their newest and best discovery yet and you must simply try it because it's so good. It's just lying. These are lying scum. People fall for it all the time and it surprises me. It's amazing how easily people can be led because if you don't say when a game is not good, then the game will never get better. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to provide honest, genuine feedback so that the developers can consider what I'm saying and decide whether or not, oh, actually, yeah, there's something we could do there. Let's, yeah, let's add in another way of scoring. Let's add in collisions. Let's have injuries. Let's have substitutes. Let's do some of this stuff because actually they're good ideas and it would make the game better. And I wish a year ago when we sent this game out to a load of YouTubers, some of them would have come back with some good suggestions like this. And then we wouldn't have spent the last year just developing the characters, which is what appears to have happened. Now, don't get me wrong. Pathia have released a lot of games and all the games they've released in the past, I thought were excellent. I've really enjoyed playing them. My wife was massively into uh, the last Pathia game that came out. Ah, the name escapes me. I'll have to put it up on the screen. They're a great company. They make really good content. But this game, I just feel, misses the mark in so many ways. And I, I can't play it. I genuinely can't play it. It irritates me and frustrates me too much. And it needs to change dramatically for me to be able to recommend this game. But that's my opinion. And that's what I do here. I play a game, I give an honest feedback. You like it, you don't like it, that's okay. Tell me your thoughts. That's what's more important, especially for the developers. These are just my feelings and, well, it's a miss for me, I'm afraid, guys. But thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.
Saved it. Of course he did. Doesn't mean anything. Cheated. 